Look at this guy. Landon has his own little tub of mac and cheese. Kids these days, so spoiled. All right, everybody, uh, welcome back again. Probably already said that, but uh, exciting video today. New mold day, new mold release day. And uh, as you've seen in the thumbnail and title by now, we're gonna be playing with the big brother to the Angling AI AR worm. However, not only is this a Magnum version, and it is humongous, like humongous. Not only is it a Magnum version, we core shotted it. And uh, that just takes it, boom, to a whole new level of creative possibilities. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be playing with today. Now, of course, you can use this mold um, not as a core shot, you just don't use the rods and inject it normally like you would any other mold. Um, but I think we're really, really gonna try to do some whack stuff with it because that's the idea of the whole core shot. Um, you know, uh, I, I guess idea is for lack of better terminology. And uh, you know, that's something that AI came up with. He was the first person to do a core shot mold for the small hand injection market. And uh, that's still uh, one of the most popular molds. So uh, we are excited to bring this to you today. Let's jump on in. All right, it is time to get into this. This is actually the tail mold. Uh, but we'll go ahead and look at one of the molds as a whole first. And uh, I mean, this this is a big this is a big mold because it is a big time bait. There it is. It is massive. So, just for a little comparison, this is the regular AR worm, and it is, I believe, exactly five and three quarter inch. So the new Magnum is a seven inch, and you can just see the size difference right away. Look at the difference in the size of the tail. And of course, this is a core shot mold. So here we can see the core rods looking good, looking fresh. And it's a really wide cavity bait. So your shells are gonna be thicker, right? Um, so whenever, I, I, I guess whenever you're doing your shell color, you just have to keep in mind that for transparency's sake, so that you can see the core effect you don't want to put too much pigment uh, in your shell color because the thicker the shell, the more difficult it can be to then see through the shell to get that core effect. So, um, and, and this will be the first time I've used it. These came in the mail like yesterday. So I'm really, really, really excited. We'll go ahead and open up the next one, which, you know, a little repetitive there, but <clears throat> okay, these are really on there. But uh, I'm, I'm excited, so just kind of wanted to show you. Oh man, it's like a mirror. Hello everybody, wave. So anyway, that is the mold and uh, it is absolutely huge. And then of course, you can use the tail mold. Now one thing I will say, uh, just talking to Josh ahead of time, is the way that the, way that the tail is shaped, right? If you think about the core shot stick bait, it's just this, right? It's, it's just a stick worm. So the core rod is able to go all the way to the end of the bait. We kind of have to stop it here. So if you use the tail mold and you put a, a solid tail in there, you really will have a hard time getting the core effect and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but super excited to show this to you. The possibilities are endless. Let's do it. So a worm this big, we wanna use some really firm plastic, okay? Generally speaking, whenever you're making your own stuff, the larger the bait, the more firm of a durometer you want. Uh, the big box companies just don't seem to get that. But we're gonna make these right. So we're gonna use some dead on plastic tube blend and we're just gonna give it a quick stir here, a quick mix, get everything ready to go. And then we'll meet you back and build the first color. I'm thinking we're gonna go with a peanut butter and jelly core shot Magnum AR worm. Sounds pretty good. All right, so with any core shot system, we need to lubricate the rods. So we're just gonna use regular worm oil. You can use any spray lubricant, WD-40, whatever your favorite lubricant is. Uh, we're just gonna use some worm oil because that's something that we have a lot of in the shop and it works quite well. We're gonna meet you back when there's no laundry noise. All right, so the rods have plenty of oil on them now. So uh, that's always a good thing. In fact, it never hurts to add a little bit more. And just like the, uh, the other core shot molds, just lay them in place. Nothing to it, nothing to it. 
There's a little notch there in the cavity on this side to where you can kind of center it up and then close up your molds. Just like that. All right, so we're just gonna start with some black grape here and not too much, again, now this is a full cup of plastic. I'm assuming that these molds drink a lot of plastic. All right, what I was trying to say is that these molds are gonna drink a lot of plastic even for the shells because they're so big, number one. And number two, that shell color technically is going to fill in the tail portion as well. So there's just a lot of plastic that needs to go into the molds. So that's what we were trying to say. So we're just gonna stir in some black flake here. And, uh, and just kind of see, see, see if we like that. Maybe a little bit more black flake, just to give it a little bit more, <clears throat> more pepper. Okay, here we go. We have a 10 ounce injector. Uh, I'm thinking it's gonna use almost this entire cup, if not, maybe even run out of plastic to get both shells. But you know, that's part of the learning process whenever you have a new mold. We will find out. Okay, that's not too bad. We're definitely gonna have enough. That's good to know. Hold a little bit of pressure there. You know, anytime a cavity is just that big and fat and thick, definitely wanna hold some pressure when you inject. And um, you know that, that way you're really making sure that everything is filling out. And uh, you know, you, you don't want any dents if you can help it, which is, you know, Denting is usually caused by a temperature differential, and I did not preheat these molds. I don't think we'll need to, but holding some pressure definitely can help. All right, let's see what happened. Let's see how we did. Always exciting when it's legit the first time you've ever used a new mold. I did not practice. I did not uh, try it ahead of time. Here we go. Oh man, look at that. Okay, looking good, looking good. So you can see those shells are definitely pretty saturated. You can still see the rod in the center. So I think we'll still get a decent core shot effect, but it may not be I don't know, yeah, okay, actually, yeah, once I got those out of the molds, yeah, you can you can see through it a little bit better, I think. I don't know, what do y'all think? It's gonna be close. In fact, it, it still might even be a little bit too much saturation, but there it is. And basically, we just need to clip off the tail. So, just like this, All right? And so here's what you'll actually do. You'll then set that shell back in, just like the other mold. And now your core color goes through and then fills in that tail. So, hmm. It's gonna be close, y'all. I, I think we might actually have a little bit too much saturation in the purple. And we won't be able to see that brown too well through it. There again, you know, this is my first time, so I guess, I guess we'll find out, ultimately. Everything I'm saying now is literally just speculation. All right, now we got some lawnmower noise in the background. The neighbors bought a new lawnmower, so uh, hopefully that's not too loud. But I don't want to stop now, because I've got everything ready and the plastic's hot. And I just spilled pigment all over myself. That's great. Yeah, word to the wise, never wear nice clothes when you're out here doing this. So basically, we're just gonna start with a straight brown. Straight brown, I mean, that's just as plain brown as it gets, but we're gonna brighten it up with some yellow, which to me gives it sort of that uh, PB&J look. And that is peanut butter galore right there. You can even brighten it a little bit more. In fact, the brighter the better, honestly, for a core shot without making it look, you know, straight yellow. So, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, that right there is very peanut butter-esque. All right, here we go. Sorry for all the noise again. I know I mostly hear it and y'all don't, but I just want the production of this channel to be the best that it can be for whatever that's worth. 
All right. Really holding some pressure. Yeah. Here we go. Hopefully they'll stay all on one. Oh man. All right, I really hope that's coming through on camera because you can actually see the cores. Yes really well we lucked out i was certain that the shell was going to be a little bit too uh purple a little bit too saturated and then it would sort of hide that brown through the middle but as you can see it is there baby oh my gosh we got to get them out that is <laughs> look at those That is absolutely insane. This is the first time I've held one, like, inject, like, fully done, you know? All I've held so far are the shells. This, this worm is absolutely massive. Can't even fit it in the camera. That is, ha! Y'all, this is a game changer. All right, now let's check on the other mold. Make sure that those filled in all the way. Man, I, I got to tell you, this worm is absolutely massive. And, you know, what's cool about the AR worm, whether it's the large size here or the normal size, as you saw earlier in the video, let's say your tail gets ripped off or, or it maybe gets torn here. Boom, just rip the whole thing off, and then you basically have a five and a half inch Cinco left over. So it's it really is two baits in one. Oh, yeah. This is absolutely sexy. And not a normal color that you see in core shot. I don't see many, many configurations like that, like a PB and J. So I wanted to do something different uh, for the very first inaugural run. There it is, y'all. All right, these turned out absolutely incredible. Um, cannot wait to see the next color. So for the next color, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the king of core shot colors. A rainbow trout, which means that the shell is going to be a laminate. It's going to be a watermelon and a white pearl with a, um, a very bright pink core. Um, it's a color that I've been doing in the core shot mold for a long time, um, but not in this mold, of course. And I think it will really, really showcase this mold really well. So I think we're going to go ahead and try it. Here comes the rainbow trout core shot color in the new Magnum AR worm. All right, let's build this rainbow trout pattern up a little bit. So we're going to use some uh, watermelon pigment over here. Again, not too much. Now, a little more than that, huh? But yeah, watermelon pigment over here. Then we're going to, uh, come on now. Then we're actually gonna darken that up with just a little bit of green pumpkin. A couple drops of green pumpkin. Yeah, looking good, looking good. Yeah, still might need it slightly more saturated than that. The other side is white pearl powder, simple enough. There again, you don't want to get too much of it. So we're going to start with that. That's about half of a quarter teaspoon. So about a sixteenth, or sorry, an eighth. Yeah, all right, there's looking good. So that's basically the base of the color. All right, now we're ready for some flake. So again, we're just going to go with some medium square cut black flake for the watermelon side just to add our texture. And then what really makes it bright and exciting is adding in a little bit of small gold flake. Just like this. Yeah. All right there really brightens up that side. Gives it lots of exciting sparkle. Yeah. I think that's looking nice, maybe a smidge more because we always work in smidges here on the World's Worst Fishing. That is our favorite measurement, just like in Southern cooking. All right, here we go. Just a simple uh, regular laminate injection with a dual injector. We just gotta hope that the saturations are right. Again, that's always, always 
sort of the key element to getting a good core shot. All right, let's take a look at the shells. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's looking really good. So you can see obviously the watermelon side uh, with the um, black and gold flake. That's looking very good and pronounced. Yet we can still see through to the core rod. And that is key, is being able to see through. So let's go ahead and take one off. So you can see that we got the white pearl side maybe a little, just slightly too thick. The good news is the pink is very loud and I still think it will show up pretty well on that side. So let's go ahead and slide this off. Yeah, really good laminate. You can see uh, even with the core shot rod in the middle of the cavity, uh, this actually shoots a really good laminate. Where are my scissors? Yeah, so again, we'll just kind of clip that off. Make sure that is wide open and back she goes in there. So, okay. I'm thinking these are, are gonna look good. And there is the second mold. All the shells came out absolutely perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and close up. And now it's time to mix up some very, very pink plastic. All right, let's run these pink cores. I'm excited. Oh. <clears throat> Drew up a little bit too much plastic there. All right, hopefully these are gonna turn out. I think they deserve a little bit of a drum fill, a drum fill too. Here goes some hot for teacher. Little hurt to action there. All right. Dun, 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 yes. Looks like they all filled. The pink looks good. Tails filled in perfectly. Now, the test is, how do they look from the other side? Yes! We did it. We did it. Look at that. As you can see, you don't see the pink near as well from the pearl side. It's definitely more visible from that side. But, if you just look at the effect, to me, it works really well. So, if I did this again, which I'm not going to do this again today, I would try to lighten up that pearl side. But I think overall, those, those are pretty stunning. That's it, that is the rainbow trout core shot effect. Yeah. Yes. So, back to, uh, back to what I was saying originally. Um, the, reason why, the reason why the core shot is done this way um, to where the tail kind of has to fill in with the core color is because unlike the stick bait mold where the whole cavity ends right here at the end this still has all of this tail so if you were to use the tail mold right which you can do and put a tail um, right there in, into the back then whenever you kind of run your your shells and your cores that's going to block air being able to escape now the mold is vented on the sides but the core whenever you go to fill in that core that plastic because that shell's already in the cavity now these vents on the side don't really count right the plastic can't vent through the shell like the air can't vent back through the shell back through these side vents so you're essentially blocking air to escape out the back of the cores and they're just not going to fill in now I, if somebody can figure it out that'd be great but just the general, I guess, shape and configuration of the mold, we wanted to do it uh, as a core shot, and that's just kind of the only way that it really works in practice. But I'm not complaining. Look at that, that is absolutely sexy. Yeah, look at this. That is madness, absolute madness. Ho, ho, ho. All right. I think that's gonna wrap up the bait making portion. Now let's see what they look like in the water. Holy smokes, I'm actually at a lake. It's Lake Talquin. 
Thanks to Happy Jack. Wave. So, hold on. Wave. I'm to, I've, I've got to get this Jerky J rig perfect. Yeah, okay, so. I can wave. Yeah, he's out here putting on store bought stuff. It's so like I can, I can, anything knows that that I can that make you so. I just got a new open port jerkbait mold, That's dummy. Not a jerk bait, jackass. Oh. It, it looks like a jerkbait to me. It doesn't matter. This is the story of the day. Oh, oh. I've already heard you. Yeah, those. All right, little little water action shot here. Compliments of Happy Jack. Oh yeah. Now kill it. Oh yeah. Let's let's get some more. Can never get enough. Can never get enough, man. I mean, just look at the look yeah. at that tail thump. Now we don't really have rainbow trout here in North Florida, uh, but this color is the most visible in the water because Happy Jack was very upset that I put that on. He's like, dude, you're not going to catch anything. Yeah. Luckily, we have some more natural colors. It's like a saltwater rig. All right, one, one more, one more shot. All right. I'm gonna get like a close up. Oh, as I get, oh, hold on, oh. let's try that again. Try it again. Gonna give the this viewers worms, here a headache. Watching sucks. the, it's not weedless. It's not weedless. Dude, you really know how to sell a product, huh? Oh my gosh, look at that. That's Honestly, all I need to see. Not... Here's how much I don't fish, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot my camera tripod. So I really can't set the camera up, so I'm gonna film whatever I can. I just got thumped on the rainbow trout and it tore the uh, tail off, but... No, the Senko. Right, right, exactly. That's now, literally. now, now I literally have a five and a half inch Senko. I'm not gonna fish with this because I wanna throw the AR worm as it should be, but you can literally save that, wacky rig it. I just think it's cool, it's two baits in one. It throws a good vibration a lot of people... It's incredible, man. I like I like a buzz bait, but by this time of year, a lot of these fish have seen them. And kind of the way you can work this worm is like look at a, that that tail kick like that. You can work it like a that thing throws a dog on wake. Yeah, like a. Finesse, I'm loving it, man. Like a finesse buzz bait. And it's, it yeah, it's a finesse. It's, it's a weedless bait. buzz bait. See, I mean, look at that tail kick. And you can fish it under the surface just as good. So. And what look. I like about this too is you'll get a lot of. Like these fish have been hammered on, they're hot. Yeah. They're real lethargic. And when they come up on this thing, unlike a buzz bait and unlike most of your top water lures, they come up and they hit this. You can let them take it for a second. You can you also you can also kill it too and fish it like a worm in front of their face. Exactly. Which you cannot do with a buzz bait. So you know, off chance that they miss it, Lots no of problem just I mean that sucker right there. And that's, I like to fish that's dirty. it with you can get that tail to kick better with the weight on it because it'll keep that head down and it'll keep that tail up oh it happened it happened happy we're not even playing, like we didn't even just hook that stupid looking worm no why should that fish hit y'all should just uh, dude it in his mouth that the that was <laughs> the so rainbow fun. trout ar worm let me show y'all how this went down we have this little nook back here and i threw it right on the edge of that you grass there on right, in there right there that fish come out and wake and i knew that we had our first fish catch ever on this worm. And it was the rainbow trout pattern that Happy Jack said would not work. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, what a fool he is. Y'all. Yes, sir. Boom, baby. That was awesome. The worm works. All right, here we go. Release time. Probably about a two pounder. Thanks for playing. You bit, yeah, the Hunter Bozeman release. You bit the first ever Magnum AR worm. And uh, I guess it's gonna swim off. There it goes. Happy Jack's on. Oh yeah. All right, about the same size. Oh, on the PB&J. Look at that. That worm actually looks like it to catch a fish. <laughs> well, the other one does too, because it caught a fish. Beautiful, man. That fish spends 90% of its life right under that mat. Yeah, but it swam out to bite that worm. Oh. Y'all, a bass just swam right through the light. We are getting excited. We've got a couple four inch open pore swim baits, a baby bull shad, plenty, oh, plenty of worms. That's a bass, oh my God. All right, we're gonna meet y'all back if we catch one. Yep. Yeah, a little bonus fishing right there. Just caught this on a, what, what bait is that? 
it's like a $30 pencil popper, right? Yeah, pretty much. And threw it up here in this light, and the sound that this fish made hitting it was unbelievable. It's an absolute explosion. Chunky three pounder. There you go. Yeah. Been a fun day, fun video. Hope y'all have enjoyed. Well, all right, it is the morning after our little fishing trip there. Uh, awesome getting a couple catches on the worm. Actually had quite a few hits. I think just because it's a big profile worm, we were getting bit with some small fish and I was missing them, but we were able to get, uh, to get those two. Uh, and then we stayed out there past dark and uh, did some dock night fishing. So that's always fun. It's been years since I've been able to do that. Um, so an awesome time. Uh, glad I was able to hook up with Happy Jack and go. Um, but anyway, thank y'all so much for watching this video. It's so fun when you have a complete video like this. When I'm able to get a new mold, make a brand new bait, and take it fishing and have success. That's as, I mean, that's that makes me happy as a content creator. So hope y'all enjoyed. Please shoot me lots of comments down below. Let me know what you thought, and we will catch you in the next one.